In today's episode, we're not only going to do a full repair on this vehicle, we're going to break down the cost to repair it, what the insurance company paid, and what I profited off this repair. So let's dig in and get started. So when this vehicle came in, the hood was tied down. They were driving it. They dropped it off at the shop. I had not written an estimate on this vehicle, and I went off the insurance company estimate, which they emailed to me. After getting the hood open and taking a quick look at the damage, I could see that there was some additional damage that was not on the original insurance company's estimate. So we need to take the bumper off, tear it down, and take a good look. The original estimate had this radiator support being repaired, which I took one look at it and thought, this needs to be replaced. So I immediately called the adjuster, had them come out to take another look and write a supplement. With the adjuster coming out tomorrow to take a look for any additional damage, we're going to take the bumper off of this, tear it apart so we can inspect it further and make sure everything gets on this next estimate. So once we got the bumper off, we could plainly see that the radiator support indeed needed to be replaced. We also needed to replace the radiator and the air condenser. Both were bent and damaged badly. It was now time to order parts, so I got on the phone and I immediately ordered the bumper cover, a used hood, a grill, the left and the right headlight, and then a radiator and an air condenser. We also ordered the radiator support, which was 160, and a new resonator box, which was 75. So now we needed to pull out that front radiator support to get it back into shape as best as possible before we cut it off and remove it. The reason we do that is we're gonna, we wanna pull that out and that's gonna help everything around it come out to its natural position. So when we go to replace the new radiator support, everything else should be in shape or as close as possible. So we set up the chain hoist and the pulling tower, and we're going to pull right on the underside of that radiator support and pull it out straight. I'm using a hammer and a piece of wood to straighten this radiator support on the lower portion while there's pressure on that radiator support. And now we're gonna start removing the radiator and the air condenser and get it all stripped down to remove the support. Now I'm gonna reuse my Sawzall to remove portions of this radiator support so I can access all the wells that need to be ground down and drilled in order to remove the rest of the radiator support. So I'm using my belt sander here to grind the welds and then I will use my air hammer to remove those welds and break them loose. Now this radiator support wraps around that frame and it's welded there so all those welds need to be removed as well as the top portion of the radiator support here where I'm belt sanding these welds. If we take a look at the revised insurance company estimate, you can see they pay 10.3 hours to replace the radiator support. And that's at a labor rate of $54 an hour, which comes to a total of $556.20 to replace the radiator support. The next thing we need to do is test fit this radiator support to make sure it fits properly. And then we're gonna put all the components back on it, like the hood, the fenders, the headlights, the bumper cover, make sure all the gaps are good and everything lines up properly before we permanently weld this radiator support in. The insurance company estimate also included some mechanical repairs, which is included replacing the air condenser, replacing the radiator support, draining the fluids, and then recharging the AC system as well. We'll talk all about that at the end, and I'll give you a breakdown of the labor costs involved. Okay, now we have the radiator support mounted into place with some self-tapping self screws. This is temporarily mounted so we can put all the body panels on line them up, make sure everything fits properly. And it's important to make sure you put the headlights in, the bumper cover, the rebar, um, also the absorber, 
all those components that are get on the outside of the body to make sure everything lines up. Now it's not that important to put the radiator and air condenser in. Uh, we're not going to want those in while we weld, but we need to put the outside body panels on to get every, everything fitting properly. Okay, so now we have all the body panels and parts mounted. All the gaps look good. The bumper to the fender gaps, the fender gaps to the hood, those all look good. Just a few little adjustments. We got those into shape. We did put the latch in and the hood shuts and latches properly. So now what we need to do is we need to remove these parts and continue welding the radiator support in. Then we can refinish that radiator support and get it to look as factory as possible. So I've prepped out the radiator support and everything to be welded. I'm going to go ahead and use my pinch welder wherever I can to weld these pan this panel together. Uh, this gives a nice clean weld. It pinches the two pieces of metal together and welds them. And it just does a real nice job. So that's where I want to, what I want to use whenever I can. Now in some areas you cannot use this tool, but I will leave this tool in the link in the description and all the tools and products I use in this episode. Now we're going to move on to this hood and get this ready for paint. It's got a little dent in this hood that we need to repair. So I'm pushing it out with a dent repair tool from underneath. I'm going to push it out the best I can and then tap down some high spots. And then I'll take my Orville Merca sander and machine sand that dent uh, with some 80 grit sandpaper to get it prepped out for some body filler. So now I'm going to knock down a few little high spots with my pick hammer and get those knocked down so it's ready for some filler so it's as flat as possible. I'm going to use some Roberlo Maxi Light body filler on this and you want to spread the body filler an inch to two inches on either side of the biggest part of the dent. This allows you to have a good area to block sand flat so you have a nice straight panel when you're done before you put the primer on. I did notice there's a few little chips and nicks in this hood. We're going to machine sand those out with some 320 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander. And then we'll put some 2K primer over those areas. Now I'm going to sand over this body filler with some 180 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander. I'm going to use my orbital sander kind of as a block and we're going to block it, use it in an X pattern and that's going to help get it straight. We're going to do it in all different directions just to flatten it out and knock it down. And then we're going to go over it now with a long, longer block with some 320 grit sandpaper on it. This is a flexible block that will curve with the contours of the hood and get this nice and straight. So I'm going to put a little skim coat over this dent with some Roberlo Crystal Glaze. It still had a little bit of a wave in it. I wanted to block it just a little bit more and get it straight. And I'll be also filling just a few little nicks and chips. We'll block over it one more time with some 180 grit sandpaper on this small block. And now we're going to sand over those repaired areas with some 320 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander. And I'm going to do this entire hood. Here are some of the little chips that I've noticed. I machine sanded those out, but there's going to need a little bit of this spot putty. We're using the R1 spot putty. Filled them up and we're sanding them out. And now we're going to be ready for primer. So we wiped the entire hood down with some prep solvent. That's an automotive prep solvent that removes any dust or contamination that's on the panel. We've masked it off and now we're mixed up some 2K urethane primer. This is the Roberlo M1 primer. I did reduce this just a tad because I don't want a real high build primer on these areas. It's not going to take much. 
Now Darius is gonna prep out this front bumper for paint. This is a pre-primered bumper, so we're gonna machine sand this or hand sand it, get in all those tight contours with some 600 grit sandpaper. We're now gonna start putting everything under the hood back together on this. The air condenser, the radiator, we're gonna put all the wiring back where it goes, the battery, the battery box, the air cleaner, all those components. The only thing we're not gonna put back on right now is the front bumper and the headlight. I will be painting the front bumper off the vehicle. I'm gonna put the fenders on, or leave the hood on, and we're gonna blend under the top of the fenders and the edge of the fenders to get a good color match. Okay, so now we have this almost all together. We just have to put in the battery, fill it with fluids. Um, we gotta put the rebar on, front rebar on, the horns, headlights, and then we're gonna save the bumper. We're gonna put the fenders on, but we're gonna save the bumper till the very end because we're gonna paint the bumper off the vehicle, paint the hood and the fenders on the vehicle. Okay, so now we have the bumper all base. We're gonna start spraying the fenders and the hood. I'm just doing a little bit of a blend right here on the edge of that fender where the bumper meets it. And now I'm gonna cover the primer with the first coat of base. Now, Darius has it all masked off with plastic and paper, so it's all ready. We put foam tape in the jams to keep overspray from going in the jams, and we're gonna start the painting process. Now that I've got the first coat of base covering that primer, I'm gonna go over the entire hood. Since we sanded this hood with 320 grit sandpaper, we need to put color on this entire hood. I wanna make sure it's got two good coats of color on it, maybe three. Now, when I get close to the edge of this fender here, I'm just gonna run along the edge. I'm not gonna worry about the blend right now. We'll blend it on the final coat of color. My paint gun today is the Segola 3300 GTO. 
This is a fantastic gun. If you haven't checked out the full review and demo on this gun, check it out. I'll leave a link at the end of this video. Now, as far as my settings, I'm running 20 PSI on the air pressure. Now that's gonna vary depending on how you spray and what conditions you're spraying in. Now, I do have my fan pattern wide open. My volume, I have two and a half turns out. I would re recommend two and a half to three turns out to start and see where you're at from there. You wanna make sure you're overlapping 70% on your passes. You wanna have a consistent speed, a consistent distance from the panel, and that should give you a good finish. And if you want more information on painting, I have a video on Lane Clear Light Glass. Check it out, the link will be at the end. While I'm finishing up the base on this vehicle, let's go ahead and talk about what I made on this vehicle what the insurance company paid out, and what I profited. Looking at the labor totals, we have body labor at 22.2 hours at $54 an hour, the refinishing labor 15.1, mechanical labor at 2.4 at 75 an hour, and then the total labor at 39.7. This gives us a total labor of $2,194.20. The insurance company paid out $2,334.04 for the total parts. My wholesale price on parts was $811.98. At the bottom here, you'll see the supplement amount, which was $1,788.02. That was the work that was missed and the parts that were missed. The total repair cost comes to $5,577.80. The customer was responsible for $500 of that, so the total was paid by the insurance company was $5,077.80. The total revenue on this repair was $4,765.82. That is not all profit. There are other costs involved as far as overhead and material cost. And this repair took about five days, give or take a half a day. And if you enjoyed the breakdown of the cost and what this job was worth, let me know down in the description and I'll include some more detailed explanation in future videos. Let's continue clearing this hood and finish up this repair and take a good look at the finished product. I'm going ahead and putting the finishing touches on this first coat of clear. It is a very hot day today and I want to remind you guys to use the right catalyst for your clear coat, especially on a hot day. You don't want that clear drying up too quickly. You want it to stay open and dry at its, a normal rate. So I'm using a slow reduce a slow activator. You could use an extra slow activator in this kind of temperature. And my quick tip for today is don't spray scared. If you spray scared, you're more likely to screw up your paint job. Have confidence, paint it like you own it, and you'll do great. And if you have any questions about paint and body repair, leave them in the comments below. You can also follow us on Instagram and TikTok at GarageNoise247. Okay, let's finish the clear up on this, put it together, and take a good look.
This job is about wrapped up. We're going to pull it outside and take a good look. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching and being part of the channel. If you want to build your skill and increase your knowledge, you just got to watch this next video. We'll see you next time.